Hey, what's up cats and kittens and shout out to all my cerebralites. It is me, the Cerebral Diva, back with another episode of Reality and that is TEA because I give it to you piping hot. So grab your cups, your sauces, gather around and let's talk about part four, the conclusion. Finally, it is over. It is over. All of the suspense is over. All of the speculation is over. We finally know exactly what happened and, uh, we get a chance to decompress tonight and, and, and prepare ourselves for next November or October, whenever the next season starts again. I, you know, I'm really curious to see. I know there's been a lot of buzz about Kim coming back, but I'm really curious to see if Mimi is going to come back because whether she knows it or not, she needs that show. Um, you definitely don't hear her name um, very much uh, in circulation since she's left the show. Um, so I think it would behoove her to actually humble herself and come back and join the cast. Um, especially since, you know, by all estimations, they're going to have to get rid of Phaedra. So anyhow, you guys, tonight concluded uh, the bombshell revelation that started last week with Portia admitting that um, Phaedra was the source of all of these uh, Cosby-esque allegations that were being lobbed against Candy. Now, in addition to the uh, the drugging allegations. We also find out that Phaedra is also the source of the infamous Marvin rumor, um, where she alleges. And and let me talk about this Marvin rumor for for a millisecond. You know, I'm I'm Team Candy 100%. But there was a moment tonight where she sounded real stupid to me. You know, and I I can't play favorites, even though I have my favorites. When I when I hear stupid, I just have to call it as I see it. Now. Phaedra admitted that she uh, basically fabricated this whole Marvin scenario that some woman called her and told her all of this nonsense about Marvin and none of it really happened. But the part that got me about Candy is that she started saying, well, the, the part is, you know, Todd was with me and Todd is, um, he's ever since his mother's di died, he's afraid to go back to New York. Now, see, now that makes me think that there might be some truth, some legs to this whole Marvin rumor. Because when you start saying stuff like he's afraid, to me, that's a man trying to play you. This Negro grew up in New York. He is not afraid to go back to New York. And if you're buying into this nonsense that he's afraid to go back because, quote unquote, his mom died, girl, stop. Stop. Now, but first of all, just accept the fact that Phaedra lied and she created she created this whole rumor, you know, this baseless rumor. Just accept that. But don't start trying to quantify the lie by saying that, you know, he's afraid to go back to New York, this, that, and the third. Because in essence, when it comes out that he's cheated on you, you're going to look real stupid, especially if the, the chick happens to be from New York. So I just thought that, that was a moment where, you know, Candy should have just, sometimes you just have to think before you speak. You know, and one thing I've learned is never to speak up and chime in about what a man will not do, because very often in most cases, you'll wind up eating crow because there's no telling what these men and some of these ladies, let me not play favorites, um, but what these men in particular will do, not just while they're in your face, but while they're out of your face. So I just thought Candy should have kept her mouth closed. So anyway, in addition to the uh, allegations about Candy drugging, wanting to drug Phaedra, and the allegation about the sex dungeon, Phaedra also got caught lying about Marvin. Now, to me, all of this acrimony stems from Todd's friendship with Apollo. This is what Phaedra, that's the only thing that I can think of that she could ha actually have any sort of, I don't even want to say it's a legitimate gripe because I don't think it's a gripe. I think at the end of the day, um, if Todd and Apollo are friends. Todd is doing what a loyal friend would do for his friend. He's looking out for his friend. Now, it just so happens that you two were, were friends as a couple. You know, you were friends with Candy and he was friends with Apollo. And so as a couple, you guys were friends. But Todd had no loyalty to you. His loyalty was Apollo. And so he did what a friend is supposed to do. So if you want to take up, you know, um, some sort of course of action, why drag Candy's name through the mud? You know, I mean, unless, and like, I think I said this in a previous video too, I can also see Phaedra having beef with Mama Joyce because Mama Joyce does the most. She does the absolute most, you know, and it's going to, it's going to take a very even killed, level headed, it's going to take Gandhi, it's going to take Mother Teresa to not want to clap back at Mama Joyce. And that's just me being 100. So I can understand Phaedra wanting to get at Mama Joyce because Mama Joyce, you know, puts herself in the middle of some of these arguments that 
frankly, she should have aged out of. But hey, that's just that's just me. Now, if Phaedra wants to take up her issue with Mama Joyce, Mama Joyce is clearly capable of defending herself. She likes to chime in. So go toe to toe with her. You know, if Candy's not going to shut her mom up, then shut, then you do the work. You shut her up. But I just feel like dragging Candy into it in a way that was really a complete and total character assassination was probably the, one of the ugliest things I've seen. You know, probably like the dirtiest. I remember when, um, what was her name? Pumpkin spit or uh, spat in uh, New York's face on um, Flavor of Love. Like that to me was like probably the most disgusting moment that I've ever seen up until now. What Fandra did to befriend Candy um, and to just go below the belt and just make up. It, it, it's not even about the fact that she was divulging information. It was about the fact that she was divulging information that she knew was not factual. You know, that she completely made up these rumors. These rumors had no base, basis whatsoever. She just decided one day, and, 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 and to me it seems like she sat at home and, you know, with her cauldron, her witch's brew, and she's sitting there and she's stirring up, you know, and she's like, oh, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of Marvin. Okay, then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Bill Cosby to this, 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 this witch's brew. And then I'm going to serve it up to Candy piping hot. Like she, she made a cauldron of witch's brew and served it up to Candy. And so, unfortunately, it all came back in the form of karma tonight. Now, Phaedra, Phaedra is the queen of quips. She comes back like that. She comes back like that. And it's one of the things that I love about her. As much as she annoys me, I love how quick-witted and sharp-tongued she is. Tonight, she <laughs> tonight she was stupefied. Tonight, she was laconic. Um, tonight, she, I mean, just the, the usually vociferous Phaedra was, she, she was, she had absolutely nothing to say. And, you know... Uh, Portia was trying to get her at her neck a couple of times where the old Phaedra would have definitely piped up and sort of put uh, Portia in her place, even in the cases where, and even if she was wrong. But tonight, Phaedra just was on a diet of humble pie. I'm telling you, she was a caged animal with nowhere to go. And we watched her, you know, just the, the look in her, the, there was like a blankness in her face tonight where it was like she was trying hard to find ways to justify some of her actions which were completely uh unjustifiable but ultimately she did apologize to candy um portia apologized to candy too and it was sort of a half-hearted apology if you ask me um and and you know what she actually apologized to kenya too now i love Ken I mean, let me not say i love kenya i like kenya but tonight, Kenya really got on my nerves too. She, she, she really served me up um, exactly what other people dislike her for, and that's about chiming in and piping in about you know piping up about things that have absolutely nothing to do with you. Like tonight, this moment with Phaedra, Portia, and Candy, it, it was sort of like a, a, a micro therapy session, and I felt like. Portia, I mean, sorry, um, Kenya being in the peanut gallery really contributed nothing of, of value. To me, Kenya was really self-serving in that moment. She has an agenda. She wants Portia and she wants Phaedra off of that show, Malcolm X style, by any means necessary. She is on a mission to get them off of that show. Now, I think she might have, she might get her wish uh, in terms of Phaedra coming back. Because let's say Bravo invites Phaedra back. Do you even come back if you're invited if you're Phaedra? Because I just don't think that it's a good look at this point for her. I think that she's pretty much, if, if I were her, I would want to take a break from reality TV. If I did do reality TV, then maybe I would try to be like the the black Lisa Vanderpump where I would have uh, Bravo come into the funeral home that she's uh, built business that she's building and, you know, shoot scenes in there and show the staff there something that's not centered around her personal life, show her being a mogul, show her being a businesswoman. But I definitely think that coming back to reality TV, even as an attorney, like seeing what we saw tonight would have to hurt. It hurts your business. It hurts your credibility as a lawyer. Like I wouldn't want her defending me. I, 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 you know, your reputation precedes you. So I think that for Phaedra, at this point, even if Bravo invites her back, I think she's better off 
declining the invitation and really just trying to move forward with her life because this has really hurt her reputation and hurt uh, her image. Uh, I don't want to say irreparably because um, I definitely think that she can come back from it. But I think the only way that she can come back from it is by removing herself from the public for a little while and giving us some time to to, 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 to sort of dull the edge on the revelations that were made um, tonight. Um, I'm trying to think of what else happened tonight. You know, the, the, the entire episode tonight really centered around the fallout from that particular um, allegation. And, and once again, I really think that Bravo stretched this way beyond limits. Like, the, there was not really enough meat to chew. Like, because they spread it out so far... You didn't really get that sense of satisfaction. I don't really feel satiated at all by the revelations that we heard. I mean, frankly, you know, they were sort of quasi bombshells, but they didn't really give me the life that I was expecting to get or hoping to get. Not that I want to see something messy happen, but I think the buildup was so intense that it was sort of anticlimactic to a degree. But overall... I think um, it was it was a relatively nice conclusion. We got to see Phaedra apologize to Candy. We got to see Portia pretty much apologize to the entire cast. Although, in my opinion, it was a half-hearted apology. But she was also under pressure and under duress given all of the things that ha had unfolded. So, you know, maybe if she gets another opportunity off camera, maybe she'll, you know, give a more heartfelt um, apology. So, we got to see her apologize. Um, and that's really about it. You know, if Phaedra does leave the show, I definitely think they, they could plug Shamia right into her place with no problem. Shamia is ready. Sh Shamia is ready. Um, I don't want to see Marlo Hampton on the show. Something about her just gets on my nerves. I cannot explain it. Um, she just, she's too thirsty. You know what I mean? Like she's, she's desperate for a peach. And that desperation just seems to me like she's going to get on the show and just do, do the most. And I don't want someone who's doing the most. I want someone who's going to do just enough. And if doing enough happens to graduate to doing the most in a very intrinsic way, then okay, cool. But I don't want to see someone who just comes on the show with sort of a point to prove, trying to make sure that they cause enough drama just for the sake of securing a place on the cast permanently. And Shamia doesn't seem like she's really desperate to be on the show. She seems like she sort of um, haphazardly got sucked into the drama. And so we got to see that she's definitely capable of holding her own when it comes to a verbal spar. Um, you know, she's a, she's a beautiful woman in her own right. I'm always down to see a chocolate sister on TV. So I think that she would be a great addition to the cast. Um, and if Nini and Kim come back, then great. It'd be, you know, so we'll get a little bit of the old and the new together. But that was really it, you guys, for this episode. Like I said, once again, I think it was a little bit of a letdown, um, to some degree. But the good part is that it's over. <laughs> it's over. It's all said and done. You know, it's all over, but the crying, um, I don't know if Phage was at home reliving the moments of this reunion tonight. I don't know what she could possibly be doing. She's probably somewhere, probably someplace with her head buried in the sand with her phones turned off. She doesn't want to talk. She has emails blocked. She doesn't, I mean, if I were Phage, I just would want to be compute, completely incommunicado because tonight was not a good look at all for Phaedra. So that's about it, you guys. I'm trying to think of what else I want to say. Um, in the absence of Real Housewives of Atlanta, I really haven't gotten into Potomac. I've tried to. It just really doesn't move me to that degree. Um, I'm sort of um, coming in mid-season on Real Housewives of New York, so I haven't decided if I'm going to do reviews for that or not. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, there's also this new show on Bravo. Um, I forget it. It's sort of this... Um, this this touristy sort of show um so i'm going to take a look at that next week and see what that gives and and if that um sort of enthralls me to some to some degree then i'll definitely be coming back to do reviews but in the meantime in between time we had a lot have a lot of great tv coming up so make sure you keep coming back and checking um make sure that you like you comment and you subscribe um what else is there uh oh follow me across all social media Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Cerebral Diva on every single platform. Um, and that's about it. Oh, as always in closing, remember to live better, love harder, and think smarter. It is me, the Cerebral Diva. And I will... Oh, before I go. <laughs> before I go. Speaking of another person who is doing too much tonight. 
Todd. Todd Todd is Todd is sort of the female Marlo Hampton to me. Todd Todd seems a little thirsty. I gotta call a spade a spade. You know, when the ladies are going back and forth, you know, Candy and, and Portia can Candy can hold her own and I, I can appreciate a man sort of standing behind his woman and giving her support. But at some 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 point during the night he it felt like he started trying to hijack the narrative from Candy and make it about Todd. And it's like I, correct me if I'm not mistaken, but this is the real housewives, not the real house husband. You need to go see Kevin Hart for that paycheck, baby. This is about Candy right here. Let her have her moment. You play the background. This is your role over here. This is not, you don't have a peach, okay? Go see Kevin Hart over at BET. This is Andy Cohen and Bravo. This is not your moment. This is Candy. So I didn't like the fact that he, you know, sort of hijacked the narrative just a little bit tonight talking about he's the uh, the last husband standing. And, you know, that it's it's true that he is. I mean, no one else is, uh, unless Shamia comes on next season or Nene comes on or Kim comes on, then we'll see Croy. We'll see uh, Greg come back in that case. And we'll see Shamia. I believe, I'm not sure if Shamia got married or if she's engaged, but... Maybe if she comes back, then it'll give some give Todd some boys to play with because he's probably concerned too. Because with all of the male players gone, what is he gonna do next season? How is he gonna have a storyline other than Candy? Because you know the men did play a pivotal role in uh, past seasons. We saw a lot of drama unfold with Matt. We saw a lot of drama unfold with uh, Cynthia and Peter. You know, and so now with the absence of all of the uh, testosterone, um, I'm not sure what poor little Todd is gonna do. But we'll see. So anyhow, you guys, I just wanted to add that little tidbit in before I left. As always in closing, remember to live better, to love harder, and think smarter. Oh, and also, if you haven't seen it, you know, I did place an audio uh, version of the show. So if you want to listen to the show, I cannot post the video. Don't get mad at me. I want to keep my channel up. So look, not here. Um, so go and check out the audio version. I'll try to post a link, link to the audio version in the description. So it'll be there for you if you're looking for it. All right, you guys, I'm out of here for real this time. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.